Question number eight from the specimen paper for Pure Mathematics 1, International A Level. We have a graph, y equals f of x, which is drawn for us. It's a cubic graph, as you can see. Um, it says, figure four shows a sketch of a curve with the equation y equals f of x, where f of x is equal to x plus 2 times x minus 1 times 2x minus 3. And then it says, deduce the values of x for which f of x is greater than 0. Okay. So first of all, for us to be able to deduce the values for which f of x is greater than 0, we have to first be able to deduce the values or see the values when f of x is equal to 0. So let's take f of x equals 0 first. And in that case, we know the equation of the curve, and we know that it sees it's already factorized for us. So we know that if f of x equals 0, that means x plus 2 times x minus 10 times 2x minus 3 is equal to 0. And by the zero product property, we know that if you have the product of two or more factors um, being 0, then one of those factors or more of them must be 0. So either you have the x plus 2 is 0, or you have the x minus 10 is 0, or you have the 2x minus 3 is 0. Those are the three ways in which this whole thing can be, become 0. So we have then x equals minus 2, or x equals 10, or x equals 3 over 2, which is 1.5. So we can see here that uh, the 10 must be over here. This must be our 1.5. And this must be our minus 2. This must be minus 2. Those are the places where the graph hits the x-axis. Okay, a, a graph will hit the x-axis when y is 0. Okay, and we know that y equals f of x, and we're finding out when y f of x is greater than 0. So we know that it's equal to 0 at minus 2, and at 1.5, and at 10. Now, we want to find when f of x is greater than 0, and we can see it's greater than 0 when it's above the x-axis. f of x will be positive. It will have positive values between the values when it's above the x-axis. And we can see it's above the x-axis between minus 2 and 1.5, and also when x is greater than 10. So we can say that the values that we need are when f of x, or when x is between minus 2 up to 1.5. Okay, now we don't put the equal sign because it says we're finding when f of x is greater than 0, not equal to 0 as well. So when it's above, when x, when x is equal to minus 2, it's equal to 0. When x is more than minus 2, all the way up to just before 1.5, it's going to be positive. Okay, and also when x is greater than 10, it becomes positive again. That's the region where the graph is above the x-axis. Let me, if I just, just um, draw in a slightly different color. As you can see, in this region here, and in this region here, is when the graph is above the x-axis. Okay, that's where it's positive. Okay. So, you've got this, and also when x is greater than 10. Okay. You should say there or, actually, you better say or there. Yeah. Okay. When x is between minus 2 and 1.5, or when x is greater than 10, that is when f of x is greater than 0. Okay, they didn't tell us to put it in set notation. Um, if they did, if they did ask us to put a set notation, we would say we would say x is such that x is such that it's between minus two, between minus two and one point five, and then you'd say or okay, um, 
x is greater than 10. Okay, that would be how you do it in set notation. Okay, so now, um, part b, it says expand f of x to the form 2x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus 60, where a and b are integers to be found. So we take the original equation here. So we take f of x equals x plus 2 times x minus 10 times 2x minus 3 and we expand it. Okay, so what we can do first is expand one at a time. So we could, for example, expand, um, let's expand these two. So I'll leave the x plus 2 as it is first. And no, in fact, I'll do it this way. I'll, I'll expand these two because they're easy to multiply. I'll expand these two. So you're going to have x squared. And you're going to have minus 10x plus 2x, which is minus 8x. And you're going to have minus 20. And that's multiplied by 2x minus 3. And then you're going to expand this. So you have x squared times 2x, which is 2x cubed. And x squared times minus 3, which is minus 3x squared. Then you have minus 8x times minus times 2x, which is minus 16x squared. And then you have the minus 20, then minus 8x times minus 2, which is plus 24x. So you have those, those two dealt with. Now you've got minus 20 times 2x, which is minus 40x. And you have minus 20 times minus 2, which is plus 60. Okay, so that will give us 2x cubed. We've got minus 3x squared, minus 16x squared, which is minus 19x squared. And you've got 24 minus 40, which is going to give you how much? 16. 24 plus 16. Yeah, it's going to give you minus 16x and plus 60. Okay. Just to be certain. 24 minus 40 yeah okay so there we have fx in the form and so we can see that a is minus 19 and we can see that b is minus 16 and we found what a and b are okay so that's that part of the question now part c Okay, um, it says here, a copy of figure 4 called diagram 2 is shown below. Okay, the question was on the other page first. I just put it on the same page as this. Um, it says, C part 1, sketch on diagram 2, the curve with equation y equals k over x plus 60, where k is a positive constant. You must clearly show the position and equation of the horizontal asymptote to the curve. Okay, so you've got y equals k over x plus 60. So we can see here that um, it's of the form um, 1 over x. Okay, that's the form. And the 1 over x curve will look like this. Okay, that's a reciprocal curve. That's a, like the parent function of it. Now this is a transformation of this in two ways. One, it's been multiplied by a constant which either makes it go further out or um, you know, closer in. It's a positive constant. So it could be, it's going to stay on these two sides. It's not going to be negative. But it could, if k is like a uh, less than 1, it will be something which is um, closer. If k is greater than 1, it's going to be something further away. So that, that just affects how close it is to the axes. It doesn't affect, if it was negative, then it would switch to these two sides. So we know it's positive. It's definitely going to be in these two sides. Okay, and we can see from this that there is an asymptote y equals 0 and there's also an asymptote when x equals 0 okay so we can see that the horizontal asymptote stays as x equals 0 okay that stays because there's no transform there's no transformation of this um, horizontally okay there's no translation horizontal translation okay so it's going to stay as it is in terms of its this asymptote will stay exactly as it is. Okay. However, we see that this is k over x plus 60, the horizontal asymptote is going to move up by 60 units. 
Now we know from this equation of our curve that we found here, we know that this crosses the y-axis at 60. Okay, we know it crosses the y-axis at 60. Okay, so we know for sure that this point here is 60 and that means the horizontal asymptote has moved up to up to 60. So the horizontal asymptote will look something like this. It will go, it will be going through the point where the curve cuts the y-axis. Okay, so that's going to be the horizontal asymptote. So now let's, if we draw the graph, it will look something like this. Okay, if we draw the graph, it will look something like this. It's going to come down like this. Continue this way, and it's going to come down like this. We don't know the value of k, so we don't know exactly where it does cross the x-axis, but it's going to, let me draw it a bit better than that. It's going to have this type of shape. And it'll come close to there, it'll come close to there without touching, and close to there without touching the x-axis without the, uh, the asymptote, sorry, without touching the asymptote. Okay, so we'll get closer and closer to the asymptotes without touching it. Try and make it a bit neater than this. Sometimes they can be a bit strict with marking with the curves. Just try and make it a bit smoother without touching the asymptote. Okay, I didn't really make it that smooth there. You just try your best to make it, and it's difficult with this tool I have here. But okay. That's a bit better. Okay, so there we have y equals k over x plus 60 drawn on the same pair of axes. Whoops, what have I done there? That's okay, let me just take this and move it across. So that's what we've drawn there. Okay, then it says, hence deduce the number of real roots for the equation f of x equals k over x plus 60. Okay, now, this is y equals f of x. And this is y equals k over x plus 60. Okay, we can see that the, the roots of the equation where they're equal to each other will be where they intersect with each other. And they intersect in two places. Okay, and they will never intersect again. Okay, this will continue going down, moving further away from the y-axis. This will continue going down, moving closer to the x-axis, the y-axis, sorry. And this will continue going up here, all right, and the, you know, there's no way this intersect. And this is going to continue going closer to this asymptote, and that's going to continue going up and up and up. So there's only two places that these two will ever meet. Okay, they're not asking us to find what those two places are, but we can just say there will be two roots. Okay, we have to just mention that there will be two roots. Okay, so there's um, two roots. Okay, so those four marks are for these both parts of the question one for sketching and then for mentioning two roots. Okay, so there we have it, the answer finished for question number eight.